What's going on, guys? I'm John Lopkin. I'm a designer over here at Ray's Labs. Uh, are there any other designers, or is it just the two over there? All right, cool. All right, we have some other designers. Sweet. All right, so um, I'm going to be talking about empty states, and obviously this is a topic that spans all platforms uh, for mobile and for desktop, but uh, for the purposes of this Android-focused theme, um, I'm going to discuss empty states as it relates to material design, uh, specifically mobile. So just to make sure we're all on the same starting point, um, let's define what an empty state actually is. Uh, so it's also referred to as a zero data state or a no data state. Um, and it's also often confused with an error page or an error state, but that's something different. That's when there's a system failure. So according to Google's uh, material design guidelines, they sum it up in with uh, that it consists of three things. Number one, it happens when the regular content of a view is not being displayed to the user. Um, also, it could be a list uh, with no items or a search that yields no results. And then finally, and what I find to be most important, is this is an opportunity for your product's brand to really shine. This is an opportunity uh, to showcase your design because this could potentially be a roadblock for your users. So you don't want to frustrate your users, you want to constantly engage your users. So why should we care? Why does that matter? Well, it happens to be that engagement is the reason we should care, is the reason why it matters. There was a study done um, by the former head of search and discovery for Google Play, collected and analyzed app retention rates for 125 million mobile phones and found some alarming results. The average, oh, hey, jumped ahead. The, the average app loses 77% of daily active users within the first three days after installing the app. When even worse than that, or even more alarming, is within 30 days, approximately 80% of daily active users uh, drop off. So it really is all about um, this engagement. And there's a lot of buzz around user onboarding nowadays, um, but we should also devote as much time to empty states as well because we can lose users on these screens too. So um, did anyone use Mailbox as their mail app? Only one? Oh, man. Okay, well, I was a big proponent, um, and I'm sure some of you have heard, maybe all of you have heard that Dropbox decided to stop uh, to close down Mailbox. Um, so that me me means I'm searching for a new uh, mail client. But uh, what I loved about using um, Mailbox was this whole idea to get to inbox zero and to get to this empty state. Their whole product was about the empty state. It was, and they awarded you, rewarded you when you got to that empty state with a new image each time. It's like you wanted to get there and clean your inbox so you got to that point. So this is a little bit of a different example because their whole product was around getting to that empty state, and it is, um, you know, the pleasure of deleting your, your mail. But the whole, uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is really because you can get creative with empty states. It doesn't necessarily need to be a blank page that just says there's no data here. We can really, um, we can delight the user a little more here. So I decided let's create an empty state together. And this is something that designers have to do and, and think about when we're in information architecture and wireframings. It's something that we try not to forget about, um, but if we do, um, it's something that developers need to be thinking about as well, project managers, strategists, everyone really needs to get involved in this, and it's something that everyone can do. You don't just necessarily have to be a designer to design an empty state. So here are some, some ways of doing that. So a useful empty state tells you three things. It tells you, number one, what it's for. It tells you why you're seeing it, why is there no data on this page, why is it empty? And lastly, how can you fill it up? And the most important part about filling it up is that call to action. How do you, how do you get that data? So I'm going to look at two apps. The first one, Snapchat. I do not use. However, I hear the kids uh, use that. Um, so a few years ago, Snapchat introduced this feature called Stories. Um, and what happens when you are taken to that page and there's no data there? This is a definite no-no. You do not want to do this. You don't want to just show a page and say there's nothing there. That's not really telling the user anything. That's just creating a roadblock. So a step up is at least letting the users know, OK, um, there's no stories here because you want to make friends. There's a reason why there's no stories here. That's OK, but 
let's paint that picture a little more. So Snapchat um, is known for their illustration and iconography, so they're doing that through imagery. Um, and they're doing that through specifically illustration. So they're saying this is a fun place um, once you have friends here, and they're creating that without necessarily using a lot of words, they're using images in this case. And lastly, again, most importantly, is that call to action at the bottom, so there is no stoppage there. You can progress and add friends. Um, this is where actually Snapchat ends. Personally, I think that there needs to be a little more contextualization around this page, and I would add um, a little more definition around what a story is. I would add just a sentence or two, just to describe to the user why you want to add this, uh, why you want to add friends here, why you want to take that extra step. The last uh, example I wanted to show you is Airbnb, which I'm sure a lot of you guys use. On that point, yeah. You could also invite the user to create the story. Exactly. Yeah. To create a chat story. Yep. Not just add friends, but make one with. Sure. And then um, next up is um, Airbnb. So I'm sure all you guys are familiar with wish lists and how to uh, potentially um, see your wish lists. Um, but again, here, this is not something that you want to do. You don't want to just name the page. Uh, furthermore, you don't want to just say there's nothing here. That's not adding any benefit to the user. That's not really telling them anything that they don't already know. So at least let them know what you can do here, that you can search um, for this next treehouse, castle, or private island um, to get to that wish list. And then just like Snapchat uh, used illustration, Airbnb is known for their photography. So let's paint that picture with imagery. And they're doing that again. You don't need as many words when you can paint that picture with imagery. And then finally, uh, they have that call to action, which again is really important because that gets you to progress to that next stage. So um, now I've come to my last slide, which could be empty, but uh, I wanted to make sure you all knew that I'm officially done. Thank you.